yes. <laughs> now I'd like to see how you photographed your specimens. Could you show me how you went about doing that? Uh, I guess I have. We uh, put the uh, specimen in a shot and it has the advantage that you can move it any way you like. The shot will hold the specimen down, take any view. That's lead shot from a shotgun? Yeah, it's uh, what's known as, as dust grade. And then we uh, Specimen is coated. What are you coating with the it dust with? Dust of ammonium chloride, and uh, you can see here we sometimes use black specimens. And they. Makes it very like a wash drawing. Then the uh, specimen goes over here, and uh, you'll see the very beautiful camera apparatus. <coughs> this looks new. In order to take an X1, with a particular lens, all I have to do is to, uh, this bar is calibrated for a 120 millimeter lens. Let's put under here, use these as the lights. <coughs> and uh, when it comes to uh, exposing, I can block off part of the film like so and uh, <coughs> why would you block off the film in order to use two parts of the film for different things so you would get two photographs I can get I can get as many as six photographs on one sheet why would you do that why <coughs> because when I grew up here we didn't have any money and we had to save <coughs> I got my Negative cost down to five cents. So, well, <clears throat> now, when I, when I make an exposure, all I do is turn it off and then turn it on. One, two, I have a timer over there, Num whatever number of seconds it is, and turn it off. I don't have to touch anything. Focus is made on the, uh, with this table. Very convenient. Can the light be turned on one more? Now, I have also these. Uh, I have a, a number of bars here. This is a 48 millimeter lens, and I can get on this arrangement up to X10. And. This is 72 millimeter, and on this one I can get, with this setup, X6. And, uh, where, did you, where did you get those bars from? Oh, they made them for me downstairs. And the, uh, the people downstairs uh, made, made this for me. This is an old microscope. And uh, I just, well, it's so stiff now, I don't even try to take it out. <clears throat> and this is an old uh, mineral stand. This, this was all a solid piece with a big bar here. And I had that cut off and mounted on, mounted on here. Now, we have a convention in uh, paleontology that we highlight from the upper left. And if you see a, a, a page of fossils in which people have 
highlighted here or highlighted on the other side, you get a different conception of the specimens. You can also make a hollow one look, look like a whole one if you light it wrong. So this is my highlight. It's a hundred watt, no wait a minute, it's, it's a hundred watt bulb and these are, are, are 40s I think and they backlight and uh, this is also to get some light in the front. Now <clears throat> with the brachiopod we usually take if we can seven views with this one we can only show five because I have no interiors. It's uh, the dorsal view, side view, um, anterior view, uh, posterior view, and the ventral view. Now, with the, uh, if we have interiors, it's depending on what detail we want, we'll probably enlarge, and uh, more or less two is common with a fairly uh, large specimen. I can get one and a half and on up. With this setup, 122 mil 120 millimeter lens, I can get X3 here. And uh, <clears throat> there would be two normal views, one of the ventral interior and one for the dorsal interior. And then there might be parts of those that we photograph, so we could have up as many as 10 or 15 pictures. <clears throat>